Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, I recently ordered this little device from Banggood as I thought it would be a great addition to my arsenal of SDR equipment. Now, what this is, is an active RF isolation distribution unit. Well, according to the website, essentially it allows you to connect one single antenna and then have it distributed up to four different receivers. Now, it comes in this nice little pouch along with a USB-C cable, which is used to charge the internal 600 milliamp hour battery. Now this thing is extremely light, only weighing around 100 grams. The internal battery is also reported to last up to three days of continuous use, but I guess if you leave it plugged into a USB power source, it can last as long as you want it to. The front plate has a single 50 ohm SMA socket, which is where you connect your antenna. There is also a power on and off switch along with an LED which illuminates when turned on. The USB-C socket here is used for charging that internal battery. Now on the rear we find four SMA output sockets which would go off to either a radio receiver or an SDR, software defined radio. You can of course mix and match, it doesn't really matter if it's an actual radio receiver or a software defined receiver. Strangely, the website specification for this product says that the frequency coverage of this distribution box is from 100 kHz up to 150 MHz. But the front panel has a screening which states it supports from 100 kHz right up to 300 MHz. Now after some testing, which I'll show you shortly, the 300 MHz does appear to be the upper limit, which is a shame because I would have liked to be able to at least it cover the 70 cm handband. At around 400 megahertz. Now for those interested in what's inside the metal box, don't worry, I'll be taking it apart and I'll show you the internals later in the video. Now I have an abundance of SDRs here, so connecting up four SDRs is not an issue. So for this test, I'll use three RTL SDRs version four and one version three. Of course, you can mix and match any of your SDRs to any of the ports. Now just remember that this is for receive only, so no transmitting through this. For that, you would need a duplexer or a triplexer. The stated insertion loss is specced at 0.8 dB, so not exactly a lot for the benefits you get. Using four SMA patch cables, I attach the RTO SDRs to each of the output ports. Now when it comes to connecting your SDR receivers to your computer, I would highly recommend using a powered USB hub like this. Now this just ensures that each SDR has enough power to continue working when the other SDRs are plugged into the same bus. Now once all the SDRs are connected, I just need to connect an antenna to the input connection and then just flick that switch to turn it on. Now the first test that I'll show you will be connected to my VHF antenna, which is mounted above the roof of the house. Now the software I'm going to use will be STR++ and I'm going to open four instances of the same application at the same time. Now once they're all open, I can then select a separate RTL STR for each application. Now the top left application that you can see on the screen will be connected to the RTL STR version three and the remaining three will be connected to the version four RTL SDR. So let's start connecting and selecting different bands that we can receive on. The top left, I've tuned to the two meter handband. Top right, we have the regular FM broadcast band. The bottom left, we have the air band. And then bottom right, I've tuned to around 137 megahertz, where we normally find NOAA weather satellites broadcasting their fax transmissions as they fly overhead. Now this is just an example of what you could potentially do. Each SDR++ instance can tune to any frequency that the SDR covers, but you are limited to what the antenna is tuned to between 100 kHz and 300 MHz. Obviously, my VHF antenna would not be any good on the HF bands, i.e. sub 30 MHz, but we can take a look at that next. Now, each instance of SDR++ can have its audio routed to third-party applications, like MMSTV, WSJTX, 3DV, etc., assuming you have the appropriate virtual audio cables installed. This would allow you to decode digital modes from different bands at the same time. 
But one point to mention is that this little distribution box is great if you want to cover a wide frequency range. But just bear in mind that some SDRs like the Hack RF do already have a wide bandwidth, like 20 megahertz or so. Therefore, in some cases, you wouldn't actually need a device like this to split the signal. So let's change the antenna to my NFED half wave and take a listen below 30 megahertz. No, um, and uh, so, so that, there was no going back then. And uh, so, but of course, some of this Kiwi grip stuck extremely well when it's put on properly. It really so here we're listening to a QSO taking place on the 40 meter handband, while on the top right we're decoding FTA on the 17 meter handband at 18 megahertz. Now I think these basic examples give you an idea of what you're capable of achieving with this little distribution unit. Now, as mentioned before, it's just a shame that it doesn't cover any higher than 300 megahertz, but I guess we can't have it all. For those of you wanting to see inside this unit, well, here it is. Not really that much to talk about here as it's pretty obvious what's going on. Now, at the time of making this video, this little unit was around $20. Now, in my opinion, that's not a lot of money, for many hours of fun that it will provide. Now please feel free to comment below with your thoughts on this and of course I'll leave a link to exactly where I purchased this item from. Massive thank you to those that contribute to the channel, whether you're watching, leaving comments, liking, disliking or even contributing with money via Patreon and YouTube membership. Until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully feeling a bit better.